time to to meet together in this church today but I believe uh, we have been together somewhere and uh, God has just made it possible that we also meet in this other side of eternity uh, I trust uh, you are under expectation and uh, you are also prayed up uh, the prophet says if the preacher is prayed up then the congregation prayed up you are duty bound to hear from the Lord. I want to appreciate also Pastor Chireka there, uh, who are really, and his wife and the family, they are taking good care of us. We are really happy, enjoying the moments that we are together at their home. I've also come with my lovely wife, and I thank God for her. She's such a darling, such a, a life companion, and I pray that God continue to, to bless her. And I trust uh, will be a blessing also today to you. I'm not a complicated person. Uh, when the Lord was here, the Bible said common people heard him gladly. Uh, and I believe the gospel is simple. It's not complicated. No wonder the prophet said God hiding himself in simplicity and revealing himself in the same way. One time, Someone went to Brother Branham and say, I want to correct you, Brother Branham. Uh, you, you call it pulpit instead of pulpit. But he said, it doesn't matter how I say, but my people, they hear me well. But you know what? From that man who could say pulpit, the cripple could come in on the wheelchairs. And as they go out, they went out rejoicing. Um, it wasn't much about grammar, and it's not much about grammar. It wasn't much about a big church. It was just the presence of the Lord and the grace of God in his life. One time someone came to him as well. He said, Brother Branham, I want to prove to you that you don't know your Bible very well. He said, sure, I don't doubt that, that I don't know my Bible very well. But I know the author, the real well, that's what matters the most. I may not know quite a number of scriptures, quite a number of quotations, or I may not share the ones that you know. I may not share the ones that you have come across with. I may share just by the lead of the Holy Spirit. I'm someone who really preaches much more about faith and so forth. And um, I, I believe that God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can just increase for me the volume a little bit uh, uh, so that it doesn't strain my voice. And um, one time, just so that it can help someone to, to get something out from the service, uh, the prophet was told by God, I always say this testament before I preach to the people that are new to them. Uh, he was told by God, by the angel, that if you get the people to believe you and you'll be sincere when you pray, not even cancer will stand before you. So him, he has the duty to, to be sincere, but the people had a duty to believe in him. And the Bible says, he that receiveth the prophet in the name of the prophet will receive the prophecy word. He that receiveth the righteous man in the name of a righteous man will receive the righteous man through word. Peter and John at the beautiful gate, the man was asking for alms there. Maybe he was expecting uh, to get some coins there. But I like what the Bible says. The Bible says, when Peter said, look on us, the Bible said he looked expecting to receive 
something. He looked expecting to receive something. He didn't just look, but he was under great expectation. And the prophet says, you usually get what you expect. If you come to church expecting to be healed, you will receive your healing. I'm just saying this so that I relax also myself and you, you relax. I'm not much of a long preacher. Uh, so the prophet was told that as Moses was given two signs, you're also given two signs. If you hold the people's hand by your left hand, you are able to detect and to tell their diseases and so forth. And you get sincere, it will come to pass that you know the very secrets of their heart. Amen. So um, that's uh, how he could operate. And uh, he said one time, we must be able to operate a divine gift. No matter who comes to preach here, uh, we must be able to operate the divine gift that God has sent us. So, Pastor Mahiri, thank you so much for your trust uh, and your faith in me. <laughs> God bless you richly. Thank you kindly for your, for your love. Um, so, I'm someone who really preaches with amens. Uh, one time I said to a certain place, my gift operates with noise, but not just noise, but uh, faith and response and amens and hallelujahs and thank you, Lord. And I believe it and I receive it. Amen. That's how I operate. So I wish I was a teacher who could come and really lay it down and so forth but you know sometimes you have to come to where you you just need to accept who you are um don't worry i'm going to read the scriptures one time i went to a certain church it was in chitungisa there um as i went there as i got there at the yard there i parked my car and i began to walk at the um along the building going to the pastor's office there and there was a sister in the church who was really believing uh, i want you when i share testimony are uh, in the very same situation, you must know that God is speaking to you. Uh, then uh, you'll be quick and just receive it as you, as you hear it. So as I was walking there, there was a sister who was sitting at the window and she was believing. This sister had one, one, one son and about six years old. And um, for the rest of the years, almost five years, she was trying to have a second born, but it could not work out well. So I was just walking outside, going to the pastor's office without knowing anything. And the moment I got just exactly to where she was sitting at the window, there was such a presence of the Holy Spirit that went to, to where she was and she began to shake like that. Then she didn't understand what was going on. Then when I passed, it stopped. I came to the pastor's office, the minister's office there, he had my meditation. The moment the door was opened and I came to the pulpit, she said that presence also left the pulpit and went exactly to the window where she was sitting there. And it was just going on all through the service like that. I don't know what it is. I'm not able to explain some of these things. I'll just tell you what has happened and what I have seen or what I have had. Uh, so at the end of the service, I think she came for the prayer line. And those are the days where... I used to run prayer line, but these days uh, it's no longer, I'm no longer even interested. I've seen God just whilst I'm preaching. Sometimes the Holy Ghost just leads you and say, pray for that one, pray for that one, just pray for that one. Um, or you're just preaching, people are being delivered, the sick are being healed, demons are coming out and be cast out. Um, and I thank God for that. Um, then uh, she went home. We went there after some months. And I saw her standing with my wife there. She was telling the story how it had happened. Uh, then I was called there and she was telling me that, Pastor, it was very difficult for me to have a second child. But I want to believe that the very day that you prayed for me, that's the very day I took conception and this is the baby. In the so, so one time I went to a certain place again. There was another sister sitting at the window. She had a child six years. She was failing to have another child. Then as I was preaching like that, I was preaching so fast. It was such a rebuke, sharp message. Then the Holy Ghost just said, stop. Then I stopped. I was told, share this testimony. 
When I began to shake, the sister was at the window also like that when the whole God just struck you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are failing to have another child, you can have. If you are failing to have another child, you can have. I say if you are failing to have another child, you can have another child. It happened again the third time. So, sometimes that's what happens. Uh, I don't understand it. But I believe it. I don't know what's in store for us today. But I want you to believe. Don't look at me as, as just looking. Look away to Jesus. Um... I have got an audio there that I've asked the brothers to play for me. I want us to stand to our feet. But before you play, let's sing this song. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. You can play the audio. Press play, brothers. Give us more volume.
We would ask you, Lord, first to forgive us of all of our indifferences and our sins and our trespasses against thee and against one another and our fellow man. May this little time of coming together not only be for the edifying of our own souls, but may it be to enlighten us in such a way in our eyes that we will go tell others. May it be a time of rededication, uniting with the poor body, by serving in all other servants of sufficient for this great task. Realizing how great man gone by has put up on their hearts to try to reveal this or to comment upon the great revelation. Then we realize that we're more than they are insufficient, but thou art our sufficiency. I pray every time that you will do something special during the time uh, yes, that the Holy Spirit will have presence in every heart. Circumcise the lips that speak and the ears that hear. And I'm this all over, and we dedicate it to you. May we walk from under the threshold of this house. May it was good for us to be there. The Holy Spirit spoke to us while we were sitting there, and now we are determined to do all we can for our shine. Grant it, Lord. May you be seen, call men and women to take a hold to it. May you raise up speakers of tongues, interpreters of tongues. May you raise up gifts of prophets, raise up preachers, pastors, evangelists, so forth that the church might be edified. Raise missionaries to go into the field. Raise for the hundred for all See that we are at the end of the age. The consolation is here. Amen. Thank you. You can put your pause there. Fifty-three there. I want you to watch something there. Yes, you were there already. Where it says me, yeah, sixty-three exactly, sixty-three. Right. Let's start from there. 
May you, during this meeting, cause men and women, that's prayer of the prophet, cause men and women to take a hold newly. May you rise up speakers with tongues, interpreters of tongues. May you raise up gifts of prophets, preachers. He says, in this meeting, pastors, evangelists, so forth, that the church might be edified. Raise missionaries to go into the field yonder and bring forth the glorious gospel. Amen. Wherever the word shall go, may it fall into good ground. Bring forth a hundredfold, for we believe that we are at the end of the age. The consummation is near. Then grant these things, Father, and above all this, the Lord, at this time help thou me, the needy one, for I ask it as I commit myself to thee for this Jesus Christ's name. Just go a little bit further then. Then watch. The prayer is being answered. Amen. The prayer is just being answered. Amen. He is praying. Raise us up speakers of tongues. Raise us up in the painters of tongues. Raise us up gifts of prophets. Raise us up preachers, pastors, missionaries. As he says, Amen. God had raised already speakers of tongues. Now you tell me that these things must not happen in the church. And you say they must be put in order. You don't have them. You don't put in order things that you don't have. You have them, then you put them in order. I have said this because I'm preaching on The physical, visible manifestation of the substance of faith. Mm. You can put my title there. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles. Let's see the God of the tape. Let's see the God of Brother Branham. When we press play at home, we want to see in the church what we have seen in the tape. You don't just press pray and you end there. We want the physical, visible manifestation of it. Let's open our Bibles in the book of Hebrews. Chapter 11 from verse 1 there. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand the world were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Uh, then I want us to jump to verse 5 there. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testament that he pleased God. But without faith... It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. Then 1 John 5 verse 4 there. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Amen. Let's go to John 1 verse 1. There. St. John. Very common scriptures. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Let's go to verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I want to read uh, again uh, Corinthians there. First uh, Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came unto you, came not with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you, the testament of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my, preach, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Lastly, but not least, it's First uh, Thessalonians 1.5, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance. I want to end there. You may take your seats. May the good Lord bless you.
uh, thank you. I hope you are going to cooperate there and to preach together with me and to say amen as long as the word of the Lord. So I want to talk on the physical, visible manifestation of the substance, faith. We know we are living in a time where our faith is turned back to our apostolic fathers. We are living in an hour. If you're a message believer, if you're a truly believer of this message of the hour, the message came to turn our hearts back to the fathers. The message came to take us back to the word. The message came to take us back to the Bible principles. Everything that we do in word or in deed, let us all do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the word. For in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. But it never remained in that spiritual realm. The, ne the word never remained there with God. And in God, the word was God. The word became flesh. The word materialized. The word became material. And it was beheld. Full of grace and truth. That which was in the beginning became flesh. That which was in the beginning with God and was God became flesh and it dwelt among us and was given a name, Emmanuel. Was given a name, Jesus, Jehovah Savior, God among us. The word became flesh in John 1, 14 there. Now the Apostle Paul is saying here, and I, brethren, when I came unto you, I never just came with excellent speech. I never just came with men's wisdom. I never just came with a bunch of quotations. I never just came and say the prophet says. I never just came and say the Bible says. We want to see the Bible being material. We want to see the Bible becoming tangible. We want to see God coming out from the pages of the Bible. Everyone is holding the Bible. Almost everyone is holding the spoken word. But it must become material. It must become tangible. It must become a reality. And the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. I want to believe if you don't have faith today, you are going to have faith. Because we are going to preach the word. If you don't have faith for your salvation, you are going to have that faith. And you receive your salvation. Because you are going to preach here the word of God. If you don't have faith for your healing, I'm going to preach your healing. And faith coming by hearing. And hearing by the word. And you receive your healing. If you don't have faith to receive the Holy Ghost, I'm going to preach the word of God. For faith coming by hearing. And hearing by the word. And when you hear the word, and you hear the word being preached, you receive faith. As you hear the word being preached, it generates faith. As you hear the word being preached, as you hear the gospel being preached, it's generating faith in your heart. Your faith muscles are growing there. Your faith muscles are growing there. Your muscles of faith are growing there. And once you hear the word as it generates faith, you receive your desire. So at the end of the day, you have faith. At the end of the story, you have faith because we have the word. The prophet says faith is not a myth. When you believe in God, when you want something from God, you don't just go there and hold a pole and say, I claim my healing there. It must have a substance. It must have a source. It must have a potential source. And there's no other source that we can get faith except from the eternal word of God. No wonder the Bible says, let it be by faith so that it might be by grace to the end the promise of God might be sure, be fulfilled. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can you say amen to that? Can you preach with me, my brother? Can you preach with me, my sister? For I want to come back to my scripture reading there. For whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. No matter what a thing it is, as long it's born of God. No matter who you are, as long you are born by the preaching of the word, as long you are born by the gospel, as long you are born by the word, you will overcome the world. 
You will overcome the things of the world. You overcome the temptation. You overcome the trials. You overcome the persecution. You overcome the hardships. You overcome the sickness. You overcome demon power. You overcome the oppression. You overcome everything of the devil. For whatsoever is born of God. The Bible doesn't say whosoever. Whatsoever. I don't know what a thing it is. It may be an adulterer. That thing will overcome the world. For whatsoever, it might be a drunkard, but once it's born by the word, once it's born by God, it will overcome the world. It may be a sickling thing. It may be a sickling thing. It may be a weakling thing. As long as it's born of God, it will overcome the world. And this is our victory, even our faith. And here is your victory. If you can believe here is your victory. If you can believe the word, here is your victory. If you can receive the word, here is your victory today. The Bible says, who has believed our report, to him is the arm of the Lord refused. Who has believed, who has received our report, to him is the arm of the Lord refused. Yes, that's much better. Thank you. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. I don't care what is this whatsoever. I don't care what is this as or ever. As long as born of God. As long as you are born of God. As long as you are born by the unadulterated word of God. The church of the living God is pregnant by the word of God. And when you say amen to that word, you take conception of your heart's desire. You take conception of your healing there. You take conception of your salvation. You take conception of your overcoming power. You take conception. Mary was visited by the angel of the Lord. And these angels, the preachers of today, are the angels of the Lord who are visiting you every service day. Some visit you on your midweek service. The angels of God are visiting you. Some of them, they come on a Sunday. The angels of the Lord are visiting you. Some of them, they visit you on a Friday. The angels of the Lord, and they are coming with a message from on high. They are coming with a message from above. They are coming with a message from the Lord as Gabriel visited me there and say shalom Mary she said what man of salutation is this that was not a street language the angel never came with a street language she came the angel came with such a greetings say you're highly favored among all women you're highly favored among all the girls you're highly favored Benon Tabaneko, you are highly favored. Benon Saints, you are highly favored. Among all the churches, among all the saints, among all the denominations, among all the bishops, among all the hierarchs, you are highly favored. You are highly favored. Say, so what man of salutation is this? The angel never said in the EP. The angel said, you are highly favored. I have come with good news. I have come that elements begin to move. There's a prophet of Isaiah that was prophesied about 400 years ago there. This is the time. This is the hour for that prophet of Isaiah to become material. This is the hour for that prophet of Isaiah to become tangible. This is the day. This is the generation. This is the time, Mary, for that prophet of Isaiah to become real in the reality to you today, this day. Said, you have a son, and you call his name Jesus. You have a son. You have your request. You have your desire. You have your healing. You have your job. You have your child. You have your son. You have your miracle. You have the Holy Ghost. You will have your son. You will have your son. You will have your child. You will have your miracle. You will have your request. You will have your desire. Mary, I'm no longer talking of that Mary in the Bible. I'm talking to this Mary here. I'm talking to this Mary here. I say, you will have your son. You will have your son. 
and that holy thing, it will be a miracle thing. That holy thing, it will be a paradox. That holy thing. One time I was preaching in Chipinga there, and I was preaching about Matthew 2, and say, Mary was found with a child. So in short, I said, Aka zongo wone kwa anemwana. She was just suddenly found with a child. Do you hear what I'm talking about? She was suddenly found with a child. She was not married, but she was found with a child. She never had slept with any man. She was found with a child. You may not have the things to bring what you pray for, but let me speak in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You may not have a medical card. You may not have a police. You may not have a job. You may not have this and that, but you will be found with your child. You will be found with your desire. You will be found with a child. Oh, come and receive your child in the name of Jesus. Receive your desire. Receive your child. Receive your prayer request. Receive your heart's desire. She was found with a child. And let me speak and prophesy. You will suddenly be found with your child. You will suddenly be found with your desire. They will find you with a child. They will find you with a testimony. They will find you with a testimony. They will find you with a testimony. She will be found with a testimony. She will be found with a child. Oh, hallelujah, I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the move. I feel the Holy Ghost. You will be found with a child. How can these things be? The Holy Ghost will overshadow you. How can these things be? The power from the highest will come upon you. Will come upon you. May the Holy Ghost come upon the church. May the Holy Ghost come upon the church. May the Holy Ghost come upon you today. In the name of Jesus, receive the power. The Bible says uh, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost uh, is come upon you. You shall be my witnesses. Uh, beginning uh, in Benona, you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Uh, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost uh, is come upon you. You shall be my witness. Beginning in Jobek, you shall be my witness. Beginning in South Africa. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and praise the Lord. Go ahead and praise the Lord so that we can have church. You can worship God better than that. If I'm preaching to people who have received the opening of the seven seals, who know they are who they are. If I'm preaching to people who know their inheritance, who know their positions in Christ, I need a better praise. I need a better hallelujah. Give me a hallelujah equivalent to the size of your shoes. Give me a hallelujah equivalent to the size of your boat. Give me a hallelujah. Give me a real health hallelujah. Give me a real health hallelujah. Give me a real health hallelujah. Give me a real hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Give me a health hallelujah there. Give me a worship there. They will find you, Benon. By the word of the Lord and say, Benon. Benon. They will find you with the tabernacle in Johannesburg. Let me speak and prophesy. Benon. They will find you with the church. They will find you with the church building. speak it in the name of Jesus. They will find you with the tabernacle one of these good days as we wait for the rapture. If you can believe, it won't be long. If you can believe, it won't be long. 
as I was preaching like that, then I went to Nedziwa there at Pastor Karamba's church. I got to the stand. They were worshipping, having services under the tree. They had a stand without a tabernacle. And God had just recently given us a church standing not on 6,000 square meters without money, without price. So as I got there, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to share this testimony at this church. I want to do something here. A testimony must produce an I said, Pastor, I'm going to say things here. You are going to believe. Then I said, if you want to build the church, you go and mark the size of the church you want. If you mark a small place, that's your problem. If you mark a small place, if you mark a small congregation, if you mark, if you mark a small tabernacle, that's your problem. I said, I gave them the test on how the Lord gave us a church in Noto. I had applied for a church stand for two years. And there's such a high corruption in Zimbabwe. And they denied. Finally, they said, no, there are eight churches that are asking for the same stand. Do some bids. We went to the biddings. We were the highest. We offered 48,000 US dollars. In this current economy, where in our church, if the trustees moves around, they come up with less than 10 US every Sunday, around $3. Six dollars. If you see ten dollars in the plate, in the offering plate, it's either it's me or another brother with a very big position there at work. But generally, it's three dollars. Until today, we collect about three US dollars offering in our church, about less than fifty rand. Yeah, it's a poor community, but I believe that all things are possible yeah. to them that can believe. Yeah. And I wrote the letter. I prayed for it. I sent it to the council, to the authorities. I believe in miracles. If you can believe together with me, you will see some today. The days of miracles are not past. The apostolic age is not ceased. For we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone, and is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Same in power, same in principle, same in attitude, same in everything. Hebrews 13, 8 was almost the principal theme of Brother Branham's preaching. It's almost my principal theme of my preaching, brother. Says, we would see Jesus here. Let us see Jesus here. So we went, the beads were done. We came back rejoicing with number one. I told my wife, I said, honey, thank God we got that stand finally. But they said, you wait for two weeks, we'll tell you who is number one. After two weeks, nothing came. I went there, I said, what happened? We were number one. They said, no, you were not. You were number two. Number one offered $10, $10 per square meter times 6,000. That's 60,000. So plus our tax 15%, that's almost 78,000 or so. Calculate for me, 15% of, of 60,000. Then they said, you yeah, are number two. Then the people that were put, you know, by, by the back, the back door, they were given two weeks to pay 33, 60% of the total amount. So they were asked to pay 60% of 70 what? 9,000 plus 60, that's 69,000. They were told to pay 60% of almost 70,000 within two weeks. So when they went, their church it split in two. The poor went one side, the rich went the other way. And their two weeks expired. And they choose the way in the prayer meeting that I had introduced in the church, that as long as they choose the on the calendar, Amen. there will be an all-night prayer meeting. If you don't come, Amen. you will run out of the church. Hallelujah. That time I say, if you come five past nine, when we start the service at nine o'clock, if you come five past nine, you go back home. It was time to mean business with God. Yeah. Let the prostitutes go back. The drunkards go back. Those the memorers uh, and the doubters uh, and the witches and the witch doctors and so forth. Let those that go back, go back. 
Let the fornicators go back. Let the polygamists go back. Those that believe in polygamy. Let them go back. We are not those that draw back. Let those who say that cloud there is the smoke of a rocket go back. Let those. I said to some person that one time he said, ah, this picture there, it's a computer. I said, thank you. You have a computer, isn't it? You have a laptop, isn't it? You have all the machines. I want you to go at your computer there and draw for me another pillar of fire like this one. Because you are saying it's a computer which did that. We now have more computers, advanced computers that can design things. And I want you also, if you have your computer, you produce me the same picture like this one on top there. This is not a computer. The light struck the lens. The mechanical eye of a camera doesn't take psychology. I want to say the light struck the lens. If you think that cloud at sunset mount, which was taken at 22 Feb 28 February 1963 for 28 minutes hanging there. And the Bible say about the space of about half an hour. And everything was 28, 28, 28. Christ appeared on the month with 28 days. Why not December? And appeared there from 2 past 6 to half past 6 to make 28 minutes. And you know 28 is a number of life. You know women, they have their cycles for 28 days. And 28 is a number of life. And the picture was put uh, not in a herald paper. It was put uh, not in this uh, in this big image. The picture was put uh, in Life magazine uh, to tell you life has come. I'm trying to answer those that who say to me when they see demons coming out, people falling down, that they will class me with these modern day false prophets that I'm really solid in the scriptures and on that that says the message of the hour. I know what I'm talking about. I want the same God of William Branham who could come in the meetings there without five minutes time. The wheelchairs were packed. One prayer at Deben here in South Africa loaded trucks with wheelchairs and clutches. That's the same God I'm preaching here Today, now, if it's the same yesterday, today and forever, we want to see the same results. If I'm preaching exactly what Malachi for preached, we want to see the same card. We want to see the same miracles. We want to see the same healing from cancer, from HIV virus, from goiters, from houses, name it. So we went for the prayer meeting. As we began to pray, there was such a power of the Holy Ghost that came to the building. I heard someone speaking in tongues. And I heard someone interpreting. It was said, Lord, the church is yours. Before that, as I began to pray, I heard myself saying, I claim that church back which have gone into the wrong hands. I take it back. The moment I said that, someone began to speak in tongues. I said, that church is yours. You will get it regardless. That was Tuesday. Wednesday, I went to exercise my faith to knock at their office doors. When I got there, they were in a meeting and something told me, I want to say the Holy Ghost told me that meeting they are in, they are discussing about the church thing. Thursday, one of the directors called another sister there, an elderly sister, and said, we are trying to get hold. She works there. So we are trying to get hold of your pastor. We can't get him. Tell him to come on, on Friday, right in the office. So Friday, went there, as I walked in the office, the director looked at me and said, Bible believers, I said, yes, sir. Said, you were praying real well there. I said, yes, we're really praying. I said, here is your offer letter. And I took it. Here is your offer letter. Here is your offer letter. Here is your tender offer letter. Uh, these people, you will miss it. Here is your tender offer letter. Here is your offer letter.
if you have submitted some papers, if you have submitted some papers, if you have submitted some applications, if you have got some submitted applications, here is your offer letter. There's another sister who wanted to go to overseas in church. Here is your offer letter. You can call and I give you your visa. I give you your denied visa in the name of Jesus Christ. You can go to Canada, my sister. You can go to Canada in the name of Jesus Christ. Here is your offer letter. It has started. Don't wait. It's already happening. Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, I feel the Holy Ghost. Here is your offer letter. Here is your offer letter. Here is your contract. Here is your permanent position at work. Here is your permanent residence in South Africa. Here is your permanent residence. Oh, receive your permanent residence. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Here is your prayer. Receive it, my sister. Receive it, my sister. Receive it. You can praise God. You can rejoice. Hallelujah! Yes, sir! Yes! Those papers can be approved now. We can approve that denied the papers. If you have denied papers, we can approve them. If you have rejected papers, if you have got a denial on your application, we can approve it in the name of Jesus. You believe it, sister? So I went, I read it to church. I didn't preach what I wanted to preach. It was a Friday and we had a service. The moment I read it, because everyone was there on Tuesday. And everyone knew the church was gone. But our God brought it back. Didn't Brother Evan Scar brought back? I said, Satan, bring back the stolen church stand. <laughs> then, as people began to rejoice, these things, you may think I'm telling you stories. If you believe, you see them now. <laughs> as I began to preach like that, I heard someone in tongues. Someone gave the interpretation and said, Lord, I have given you the money to build the church, to, to buy the stand. Sunday came, oh, oh, announced the news to the church. Another grand, grand there who was sitting at the front, an elder brother just put his hands in the pockets. He pulled out, it was 100 bond notes, which is equivalent to a dollar. He said, here is my contribution. I said, let's praise God. We now have a dollar. Out of 33,120. So we are left with 33,119. Let's go forward. Let's go forward. Can I tell you something? The exact amount you have in your pocket is enough. It's more than enough to take you somewhere. You want to start a business? You don't need money there. Yes. That's more than enough. 
That's more than enough. It's enough. What did you have? Nothing but only a boy with a little lunchbox there. Somebody came and said, the loaves of that day were too big. Okay, let's say they were too big. How big? To feed 5,000. So you needed a loaf that could cover the whole area. When someone doesn't believe the supernatural, they just don't believe. Shut up! You shut your mouth there! When someone doesn't believe in miracles, they don't just believe. Even if somebody went to Brother Branham and said, Are ah, you, you claim to have power. He said, I have no power. I have the authority of the power. He said, if you, if you really do these things and you pray for the sick and they are healed, shut me blind. He said, I have no time to waste it. You're already blind. I've no time to waste with the unbelievers and the memorers and the scornful that are promised in the book of Peter. They will come in the last days and say, where is the promise of his coming since the fathers fell asleep? Shut up! We didn't have any clue to get the money. So we raised the money. There's another brother in America send us 1,000. He had promised sometime and said, if you have a church, I'll give you a thousand. I called him. I said, the church is now here. Send the thousand, brother. The thousand came. I said, we now have one thousand and one. Then we tried to raise the money there. Trying to really compel the people. We raised about one thousand five hundred plus a thousand from America. It became two point five. Then my pastor, Pastor Trust Manda. I've got a very good pastor. I've got very good pastors there. Pastor Joseph Chikos and Pastor Trust Manda there. Then Pastor Manda sent me about two thousand five hundred. He was in charge at that time. It came to five thousand. But we needed thirty-three thousand one hundred twenty within two weeks. Then two weeks came to an end. We went for the holiday. We came back. I said, Lord, we have paid what we had. So I went to show them that deposit slip and say, at least we have done something. The moment I got to their office, they were in a meeting. Then one of the directors saw me by the window. He came and said, Pastor Chinamasa. I said, yes, sir. He said, you know what? We are right there sitting for discussing about your church. So we have agreed as a body that we have hardened the conditions. We have made these conditions so tight for the church people. They can't afford to pay 60% of the total amount. Let's relax the conditions from 60% to 20%. Let me relax the conditions and the terms that you are given there. Do you have a debt to pay? We relax the terms. Do you have a mortgage? We relax the terms and conditions. Then he said, instead of you paying 33,120, you pay 11,000. Already you have five. Go and look for six. I called the pastor right there and the pastor looked for six. He gave me and I went, I gave them. It went to 11. Now, do you see where the miracle is? There are so many miracles in that. The first part of the miracle, the church state came back to us after it was gone. That's number one. The second miracle, these that were given, they were given under 60% condition so that they could fail. I want to make it so hard for the devil. I want to rebuke him so hard. So that you get your desire. If you are sick, I want to rebuke evil spirit. If you are an alcoholic, receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke that nicotine demon in the name of Jesus Christ. So they were given conditions 60% and they failed. When we came in, the conditions were relaxed. to pay 20%. It's now a year. We have paid. I think we're around now 
13,000. So recently they told me, say, Pastor, this 2022, I want you to bring your figure to at least 20 something thousand. Then we allow you to go back to the local currency, the bond, which will be equivalent to zero. If I was afraid as a pastor, if I didn't believe in miracles, I would just say, ah, oh, we are a poor church who will by now we'll be worshiping in a classroom. If you continue to doubt, you will continue to suffer. If you continue to doubt, you will continue to be sick. If you continue to doubt, you will remain poor. If you continue to doubt, you will continue to be miserable. Come on, have faith. Come on, have faith. Come on, have faith. You have faith in God. You have faith in the word. You have faith in the message. You have faith in the Holy Ghost. You have faith in the gospel. Begin to then this the minister of health said churches are no longer allowed to worship in the classrooms. We were stuck. It pushed me to really have faith for the tabernacle. Amen. I set the dates for the dedication of the temple. We began contributions. People began to send money Amen. from everywhere in the world. And you know what I just told the church? I said, let's have at least a temporal structure of something like $5,000. Then we began to do it. I had a, just a plan that I had there. And you know what, friends? We began to build. People at church just thought it was just something, you know, just something to cover us from the sunshine there. You see, when you really want to do things, brother, do it properly. When you want to say amen, you say amen. amen. If you don't want, you keep quiet. Amen. And this is the church. Amen. This is the inside of it. So that's the church. You do what you want to do. You do what you want to do. I was worried when we got the church stand. We had a brother who was uh, our brother, very precious elder brother, Patrick Chuaura, who was the CEO at Zesa. So the Lord took him. And I said, Lord, you took our brother here who could help us to really sort out things, the electrical things, the Zesa things without corruption. What are we going to do now? Yeah. There was no way we could bring electricity to the church because the lines were very far. As I was worried like that, I was driving from the shops. I saw a truck and some people digging just in our church tent. So I came, I parked there, I said, guys, what are you doing? Do you know you're in someone's property? What are you doing here? I said, no, we are the... The, the ZESA people from the supply authority, electric supply authority there, we want to put an electrical pole here. I said, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. God can move people. God can move elements. God can do connections. You don't need connections. God can connect you. Oh, come on, connect with the Holy Ghost. Connect with the Holy Ghost. Connect with the Holy Ghost. Connect with God. They said, no, the neighbors, the people who have got houses there, they contributed their money to take the lines from there and go straight. I said, but you are passing through our church. He said, Pastor, it's good for you. I said, thank you for your words of wisdom. And you know what happened? Those guys, now the chairman of the, of the program, came and said, but Pastor, you can't just save electricity for free. I said, so how much do you want? He said, just give us $100. I said, here is $100. There. They paid thousands, brother. 
when we build a church, we never, as they were doing there, I made applications for the connection. As soon as they finished, the electricity was in the building. As soon as they finished, the telephone landline was in the building. As soon as they finished, the Wi-Fi was in the building. From a dollar. We can start from a dollar. We can start from a dollar. Come on, have faith the on people. Now, I'm coming to the testament where I was preaching. They, Mary was just found with a child. You have done what? Okay. Let them do what they want to do. Do it, brothers. Quickly do it. Do what you are able to do. And let me do what I'm able to do. Do what you are able to do. Peter there at the beautiful gate. He told the lamb there. And look on us. You look on us. You look at the preaching of the five-foot ministry there. Look on us. Sovereign God. Have I none. But such as I have. In the name of Jesus Christ. I give you your heart's desire, sister. Sovereign God. Have I none. COVID. Have I none. Omicron, have I none? But such as I have, by the Holy Ghost upon me, by the gift of God, I give you your blessings. By the gift of God, I give you your desire. By the grace of God, by the love of God, by the word of God, by the preaching of the gospel, receive you your healing. In the name of Jesus, receive you your healing. In the name of Jesus, receive you your desire. In the name of Jesus, serve and God, have I none? But such as I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, as much as you can believe, as much as you can receive it, the Bible says, who has believed the report, to him is the arm of the Lord reviewed. The Bible says, as man has believed him, to give to him, to them give him the power to become the son of God. As man has believed him, as man as you believe, God will give you the power. God will give you the grace. God will give you the ability. God will help you out. God will see you through, my brother, sister. As man has believed him, to them gave he the power. As many that believed him, he gave them the power to become sons of God. If you are a son of God, you speak like God. If you are a son of God, you conduct yourself as God. Quickly do what you can do, brothers. Do what you are able to do. And let me do what I'm able to do by the grace of God. They could bring the sick and pile them on the shadow of Peter there. And they were healed. What is it that you think that sister struck when the preacher was walking inside? That was the shadow of the preacher. This is no more time to lay hands on the people. Yes, we still come back to Mark 16 there, but we are now far beyond there. The prophet could go back to the first pool. The prophet could come back to the second pool whilst he could say, I need three spirits there. He said the first one will be there. The moment he returned his finger, it was there. Let there be, he said, this other one, if it's you, Lord, I want it to be more of a miracle. I want it to be more of a miracle. I want it to be a testament that will prove that the Lord is God. One time I was preaching in Mitarra, there were three brothers there. The Holy Ghost just moved and went where they I said, brothers, you three brothers there, join hands together. The other one wanted to go to the UK. That's where he is today. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to go to UK because God has made me a preacher and a pastor at a local church there. But if it wasn't that, I could go. I just want to go and come back. Just go and come back. Just go and come back. Just go there and come back home. You go and come back. And if you want to go and go, you go and stay there. If God has something to do with you there, you go there. And I'm sending you there. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm sending you there. You go there. You go there. You go there. You go there. 
Yes, you don't know what it is. You don't know what it is. The prophecy I've seen here. Prostitutes who were cancer eaten, who received their healing instantly, and the message people say the prophet says, the prophet says, the prophet says, Oh, come on, you sit one and woman, come on, you sit one and woman, come on, the sit one and woman, come on, my sister, come on, bride, come on, church. You don't even need to be a Christian to be healed, says the prophet. You need to be a Christian to maintain your healing. Brothers, if you believe in the supernatural, what I'm telling you will come in the headline of the newspapers. I was telling the people there at uh, Pastor, Pastor Mandiamba's church, I said, my mother is in, in the Guinness Book of Records. Yeah. Do you know it? Yeah. What is it that comes in the Guinness Book? Extraordinary. Extraordinary thing. Something that had never happened. Yeah. And that will possibly will never happen again. Yes. So my mother was taken. Yes, I want you to really get this. I feel led to say that. Hallelujah. I feel led, Pastor. It's coming. One time I read in the book of Joshua. Joshua killed five kings. He closed them in a cave there and chopped his head off. Chopped their heads off. As I read that scripture, there was such an anointing that struck me. I said, Lord, this year I just want you to give me also five kings. So I mentioned, I said, epilepsy, cancer, HIV, witchcraft. I can't remember the fifth one. Brother, that year I saw all those things happening, people being delivered. So my mother was taken when she was 16 years to be a wife to a spirit medium. Mukadzwe goes. From zero to hero. From zero to hero. That's the temporal. We are coming. We are coming. We are coming with the real tabernacle. Just grow them all. We want to see them all. We want to see the poor. They are the poor also. There are quite a number of pictures that we see. They are poor. They are electric, electrical poor. You see? We are still working on the ground, brother. This was just for us to at least find a shit. So I went to, remind me this at the testament of my mother. So I went to Mtari to Neziwa, they are sharing how God gave us a stand. The structure was not yet there. So I said, Pastor, do you believe what I'm telling you? You mark the ground the size of the tabernacle you want. I, when the moment I finished the testament of how God gave us the ground, I said, I feel led by the Holy Spirit to give you the money to build a tabernacle. Yeah. I said, do you believe, Pastor? He said, I believe and I receive it. He went into tongues. Yeah. The pastor began to speak in tongues. He interpreted his own tongues. I said, I'm giving you two things. The money to build the church and the pastor's car. Receive them. Yeah. Receive them. Yeah. Two things. For the past. The interpretation came. And it said. I the Lord. Have said it. And I the Lord. Will bring it to pass. It said it is I the Lord. Who have said it. But did they see the Lord. Who had said it? It was the preacher under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. God is speaking, my brother. God is still using vessels of clay, vessels of clay, vessels of flesh. The unveiling of God, the mighty God revealed before us. 
And you know what happened? Within two weeks, the money came from overseas. Oh, yes. the, the pastor just called, we want to give you money. I was preaching like that. I said, they will see you with a tabernacle here. They will suddenly see you with a church. And that was 28 December 2020. Is that so? Amen. Is it 2020? The church is there. Yes. I came back home. I said, Lord, you gave us a church stand like those people there. They are just as poor as we are. But Lord, you used this vessel to give these people a church built. Yeah. Why can't you help also the same vessel? Amen. Here it is. Amen. You know how much it costed us? 20 something thousand. US, that's 200 something thousand, 200 thousand runs, more than 200 thousand runs. In a church that if you move a place, you come to Zimbabwe, a church that collects three dollars every Sunday. I'm not talking about your ability here. I'm talking about what God can do to you. And you know what, friends? You are not really believing. I want you to raise your faith. You pray and say, God, increase my faith, Lord. When you really believe, I can feel it. Paul says, I perceive that thou have faith to receive a visa to go to Canada. I perceive, sister, you want to go to Canada. I perceive. Go to Canada. I perceive. I perceive. I don't know what you call it, discernment of your spirits, but what I know is not the messianic sign. That's what I know. What I know is not Luke 17 30, but Paul says, I perceive. I know in the Corinthians where it says discernment of spirits by the working of the Holy Spirit in the church. Then Malachi 4, Luke 17 was the discernment by the word Hebrews 4 12. I perceive she has faith to go to Canada. I perceive. I can perceive. I can perceive your faith. I can perceive your faith. Give me your faith. I give you your desire. Give me your faith. I give you your child. Give me your faith. I give you your visa. Give me your faith. I give you your boyfriend. Give me your faith. I give you your boyfriend. Give me your faith. I give you the money to pay your brother. Give me your faith. I give you a house. Give me your faith. I give you a tabernacle. Give me your faith. Church, give me your faith. Give me your faith. I give you Jesus. Give me your faith. I give you the Holy Ghost. Give me your faith. I give you a Holy Ghost. Give me your faith, brother. I give you your job. Give me your faith. I give you your company. Give me your faith. I give you your contract. Give me your faith. Give me your faith. Give me your faith. I give you Jesus. I give you the resurrected Messiah. This church have produced their houses wherever I go and give testimonies. I went to a certain place. I said, by the testimony of this tabernacle, if you are failing to finish building your house, you receive the money now. Another brother was just for years at the foundation level. Within two weeks, it was right up to the window level. I know what I'm talking about, brother. I know what I'm talking about, sister. I know what I'm talking about, sister. If you are building in Zimbabwe and you are failing to finish the house, you receive the money. You believe. You go to save it. One time I was preaching in Chitungisa. Before I got to preach, the brother and the sisters, they were coming from home. They were saying, Daddy, how, how do we buy the brooks? It's very expensive these days. And uh, one of the people says, let us look for people who make bricks for us and we pay them. The sister said, but we still need to cook for them. 
If we calculate the money for food and their labor to make bricks, it will be equivalent to the money to buy bricks. As they were discussing, coming to church, then they stopped the conversation because they were at the door of the church. And I began to preach. Then I stopped. I said, sister, you are worried about the bricks. Don't you know bricks is just the soil and water mixed it together? I said, receive your bricks to build your house. Within a week, there was a truckload that came. And they built. Don't you know bricks is the soil and the water mixed it together? beginning to believe you can believe and you get more. If you believe more, you get more. If you believe for ten dollars, you come and ask him, he can give you ten dollars. But if you really believe for real, you you will believe and I give it. If you are believing for hundred rand, you come to the pastor, he can give you now. But if you are really believing for real, for real. Then that I can give. That I can give. That you can receive. That I can give. If it's turned around, you can go. You can give. Now, now. The things that are impossible with men are possible. If you miss it this time, you miss it. Don't miss it, friends. Don't miss it, my brother. Don't miss it, my brother. Don't miss it. You believe? God can touch you. Let me come back to the issue of my mother. I shared that testimony just as we came to the end of the service on Wednesday, Friday, at Pastor Mandiamba's place there. I feel such a wave of an evil spirit from my left there. Then I said, Kanavaka kutia uroruhi. Rekanditu ucharorwa. If they said you will not be married, let me also speak in the name of Jesus. They say you will be married. And I want to rebuke all the riches in the name of Jesus. I want to rebuke all the ordinances uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If they say we'll not be married, let me speak in the name of Jesus. By the Holy Spirit, you will be married. There I shared a testimony of how I went to Namibia, it was my first time, and I began to share of a testimony of another sister who was 25 years. She had traveled 700 k's to come for one service. She asked to, from work and say, I just asked for one day off. Amen. Amen. Like the queen of Sheba. Amen. So as I began to share that testimony, how in Zimbabwe the sister was 35 years and she wanted to be married, I began to feel the pool for my right. I said, sister, receive your boyfriend. And she was 35 years. She had traveled 700 kilometers. That was in April, Easter meetings. August, she was in courtship. 20 December, they had a wonderful wedding. Yes. 
You can be in courtship the same day, the same year, and be in marriage the same year. There's a scripture in Genesis which says, uh, you plant the same year and half the same year. You put for me that scripture, give them that scripture there. That's what we want to do. Then I, I saw my precious brother upstairs there, my good friend. He stood up. That's what we want to do. The same year and marry the same year. The same year and finish the same year. This 2022, you will really hold it. Whatever you have written in your diary, I don't know when, how many years. Whatever you have written in your diary. I'm preaching about the physical, visible manifestation of the substance faith. Your faith must come to visibility. Must it come to be tangible. Must it come to a substance. And you say, this is that which was spoken by the preacher in Hamas. This is that which was spoken by Daniel the prophet. When they received the Holy Ghost and they were going like this. Hallelujah. The people thought they were drunk. And Peter stood there. And see you men, hearken unto me. These are not drunk as you suppose. Sin is the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by Joel the prophet. That it shall come to pass in the last days. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see vision. Old men shall dream dreams. Upon my head men we all pour my spirit. One time I was preaching in Kwazana there. I think you've got video clips. People got drunk by the Holy Ghost. They could fall down as dead people. People could go like this here to hold them and help them and peg people. And one time there was a guy who was really committing adultery in church like I don't know what. He almost died in the church when I was preaching. He screamed. That wave was terrible. He, he, he survived by holding my trousers. I said, Pastor, you know, Pastor, please pray for me. His spirit was going out. Yeah. Don't play church. Yeah. Don't play church. Yeah. Don't play church. Yeah. Don't commit a doubt here. Yeah. I feel late to say something, Pastor Mahele. I was preaching in Kambuzuma the other time. You can check it. It's even on the Facebook. And the pastor desired, was desiring nine spiritual gifts to operate, to see Corinthians in action. As I was preaching like that, I turned to him. I said, Pastor, thou have desired a good thing. If you want the more spiritual, nine spiritual gifts in this church, receive them right now. The moment I said that, a young brother began to speak in tongues. Instantly. That's why I prayed for you that type there. If you can believe, you see things here instantly. I could sing a song, the boy could get into tongues. I could sing a song. He went home in the streets walking, speaking in tongues. Where are the days of the holy rollers? Where are the days of Azusa Street? No such people. We have stayed too long in the church without speaking in tongues. We have stayed too long in the church without visions. We have stayed too long in the church without miracles. We have stayed too long in the church without raising the dead. We have stayed too long in the church without the supernatural. We have stayed too long on this mountain. Come on, turn westward. Come on, turn northward. Come on, turn northward. We have stayed too long. Fighting with quotations. We have stayed too long. Arguing with the messenger. We have stayed too long. Arguing with the operation of the Holy Ghost in the church. Do you want them? Nine spiritual gifts. To operate in this church. Receive them in the name of Jesus. Receive. 
You listen to the deep, call it to the deep. When a man came here with the white shirt, I believe, and you stood before the prophet, the prophet says, Oh, I feel a welcoming spirit in you. You are a preacher. You are not sick. You are here for a right cause. You are praying for a revival to start in your area. You are praying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are praying for a revival to start in your church. Receive it, Pastor Mahere, and your congregation in the name of Jesus Christ. You are praying for a revival. You are praying for miracles. You are praying for signs and wonders. You are praying for the operation of the Holy Spirit. You are praying for the back room. You are praying for tongues. You are praying for interpretation. You are praying for visions. Receive them. And I'm on record. Receive them. Receive them. Receive them. In the name of Jesus. Can you bring back the court there? Receive them. Start from paragraph 63. Bring back the court there. Watch the prophet there. Bring back the court there. We have stayed too long without raising the dead in the message. We have stayed too long without opening the blind eyes. Come and wake up, right? Come and wake up, church. Wake up, in on. If they don't want it in that church, they will be left with peace or like. May during this meeting, Lord, may during this Sunday, you put today's bed. May during this meeting, cause men and women to take a hold of the spoken word, to take a hold of the Bible, to take a hold of the Holy Ghost, to take life in Christ, to take a hold of a to take a hold newly. Let's start off again. May you raise up speakers with time. How can you accuse him? We measure on the measure. We don't measure on the minor. We don't measure on the minor. But we must have the minor. As we measure on the measure, you must have the minor. You must have tongues. You must have discernment. You must have healing. You must have miracles. You must have vision in the church. Receive with the Holy Ghost. I rebuke holiness. I rebuke formality. I rebuke evil spirits. I rebuke every devil. I rebuke coldness. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke witchcraft. I rebuke adultery. I rebuke backslidden condition. If you want to backslide, you backslide alone. If you want to be cold, you become cold alone. If you want to be lukewarm, you blind Laodicea. You are neither hot nor cold. The spirit of the on the pulpit again and say you fibers bring forth fruits what of your repentance you could and former believers of you are not even a believer of the message of William Brunner whilst well, Peter yet speak they receive the Holy Spirit you mind your business. Leave those that are worshipping. You get in the spirit like here. You get in the spirit. You get in the spirit. That's the trap of the people. You are spectators. 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 You want to judge things that you don't know. You want to judge things that you don't have. You want to speak of things that you have no idea about it. You spectators. You backslidden people. You wash wash the preachers. You backslidden preacher. Stay off the pulpit. You have to be called into these things here. If we remain the way we are, we will be worse off than Catholics. If we remain the way we are, we will be worse off than denominations. And some of us, we are far worse off than the Pentecostals. Some of us, we are worse off than the denominations. Worse off than the Catholics. Catholics, they don't believe in polygamy. And you want to bring polygamy.
like I'm here. You brood of vipers. You brood of vipers. I rebuke polygamy. I rebuke a doubter. You want to bring coldness in the church. You stay away. The Holy Ghost is here. I feel the Holy Spirit is here. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. the Holy Ghost. Let's be reverent. The Holy Ghost is here. Stop committing a doubt. Stop that nonsense of polygamy. You brood of vipers. Not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. Message people. Message believers. Any pastor who doesn't want to give to operate, they are living in sin and are doubt of some of them. And I speak this in the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you hiding? Why are you hiding? Quench not the spirit. Despise, forbid not speaking in tongues. Despise not the prophesying. Congratulate the spirit of Johannesburg. South Africa. Africa. Message people. Christ not the spirit. Forbid not speaking in tongues. Despise not prophesying. Receive you the Holy Spirit. Receive the move of the Holy Ghost. Receive you the working of the Lord. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard of Genesis. God has lifted up a standard against the adulterers committed in the message. God has lifted a standard against the coldness and formality which is coming in the message of the hour. I rebuke that coldness. I rebuke and expose the error. I rebuke that false teaching. I rebuke the horse rider. I rebuke that evil spirit. I rebuke that enticing spirit. I rebuke that error there. He said in the church, first apostles. He said in the church, evangelist. He said in the church, teachers. He said in the church, pastors. For the edification of the church is about. After that, gifts, healings, administrators, tongues, discernment of spirits. And the prophet says, any church that Jesus Christ claimed to be his is a church with Max 16 in action. And anything else is a false religion. If you don't have Max 16 in action, you pray for it. But if you are not praying for it, if you are not desiring it, if you are preaching against Max 16 in action, you are a false preacher. You are worse off than a Catholic bishop. You are worse off than the Pope. You are worse off. Christ in the church is the continuation of the book of Acts. Christ in the church is the continuation of tongues. Christ in the church is the continuation of visions. Christ in the church, the continuation of miracles. Christ in the church, continuation of raising the dead. Christ in the church is the continuation of opening the blind eyes. Christ in this church. 
Christ in Benoni Church must be the continuation of the book of Acts. Christ in Benoni Church must be the continuation. Christ in this church. If one say amen in the church, the heads of the people are now turning back to look who have said that. If someone speaks in tongues, people they don't know to bow their heads and close their eyes and be reverent. Didn't you hear the prophet closing his eyes and keeping quiet when he knew, when he knows that the scripture says the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophet. He never said do without them. He said when you have them, you put them in order. Yes, the prophet says if you're a deacon, if I hear there's a deacon here who doesn't believe in the supernatural nine spiritual gifts, must resign now. Yes, and they are me ministers of the gospel. It's not even the gospel because the Bible says, and our gospel, for our gospel came not in word only. This is not a seminary college. This is not the house. This is not a university of Benon. This is the house of God. This is the house of prayer. This is not the university of Zimbabwe. This is the house of God. And if we are in the house of God, let us see God in his house. Let us see God in his house. Let us see God working in his house. Let us see God serving in his house. Let us see God healing in his house. Let us see God fighting battles, casting out devils in his house. This is the house of God. This is the house of prayer. This is the tabernacle of witness. When Luther came, he was using the horse in his day. When John Wesley came, the power was added to the church. That's when the automobiles came. When the Pentecostal age came, that's when the aeroplanes came. When the prophet was born, that's when the astronaut was made. We are now in the digital age. We are beyond astronaut. All things are possible. You want to bring us back to Pentecost. You want to bring us back to the dragon. Back to the war. When the rapture is at the end. And the prophet says in this message. I think it's why Christ speaks. Any church. Any individual. No matter how fundamental. Intellectual it may be. That church. That family. That preacher. No matter how intellectual they may be, it will not thrive until they see the supernatural. Something that they can talk to and it can talk back to them. This church will not strive until we see the supernatural. You will not make it in the rapture until you have a personal experience. Not what you heard, not what you saw someone doing. You must have your own personal experience with God, your own personal experience with the Holy Ghost, your own personal testimony of the resurrected power of Jesus Christ. You don't rely on the tongues and prophecies of Agan Brighter. You rely on the tongues that you hear in this church. Hallelujah. Brother Agan Bright is not here. Receive the Holy Ghost. I don't just want to end with this where you caught me and say the Holy Ghost without consensation, the Holy Ghost without sensation. We cannot all be sister shepherds here. When the Holy Ghost came at Pentecost, there was tons of fire and they prophesied. They were called holy rollers. They were called drunken people. We are too smart for nothing. We need an order. 
We need a trip back to Calvary. We need a trip back to the upper room. You need a trip back to the Holy Ghost. You need a trip back to the power of God. We need a trip back. We can worship with adulterers. We can worship with Satanists. We can worship with evil people. If you commit adultery, the Holy Ghost must call your name out. And I bring this to you, Benon. I bring this to you. You mark those words. Yes, sir. I bring this to you, Benon. Your sins will be called out from right here. Hallelujah. In church back home in Harare, little children are speaking in tongues and prophesying. 12 years. Because the Madaras are filthy and full of adultery and lying. And God has raised little children. The Holy Ghost is moving, brother. Sins are being called out. The Holy Ghost is here now. We had an armed robber in the church. The Holy Ghost spoke, called him by name. I had to go and look for the person with that name. And I said, brother, you've got guns, you. You are a robber, are you? He stopped coming to church. And if you are an adulterer and you don't want to repent, you stop coming and mess up the people. You have got a pin number in your phone that your wife doesn't know. And you don't want to be asked about you and a doubter, are you a hypocrite? And I'm here to tell you, and I'm going back to Zimbabwe on Tuesday. And unless you repent, unless you repent, the wrath of Almighty God is upon you. Repent, Benon. Repent, Johannesburg. I know what I'm talking about, Pastor. I have brought you back the move of the Holy Spirit in this church. You are going to see what you have not seen yet. You don't need to be three years in this church to see the operation of the Holy Spirit. Yes. 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 Your sin is going to be exposed. You better repent now. You better repent today. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ. I went to the University of Zimbabwe and I began to quote the message, the audible, preached in 1964. And the prophet says, I went to a certain place to get something to eat and the little boys and girls there were hugging and kissing like I don't know what. Then I pointed sisters who were hugging and kissing at the university. The moment I pointed at them, I said, these little sisters and the boys are hugging at the University of Zimbabwe, like I don't know what. Another brother from there began to speak in tongues and say, that's, that's says the Holy Spirit. That's what they are doing. I went into the congregation. Another sister began to scream and say, Lord, forgive me. I said, you keep quiet. We'll talk outside. We had two lines of confession. Another girl came and said, Pastor, we want God to forgive us. Yesterday, before we came for this all night prayer meeting, uh, we committed adultery in this flood day. I said, that was your quiet time to come to church. And if we don't go back to the operation of the Holy Spirit, people that commit adultery, they hold your mics here and play for you and sing for you special. That's nonsense. You get off your hands from the mic. You get off your hands from the keyboard there. If you are hugging, if you are kissing little girls, you stay off there. We want little girls filled with the Holy Ghost. Like that girl in the Branham Tabernacle, when she was playing, the great physician is here. When she jumped up to praise the Lord, the angel of the Lord went to sit on the keyboard and began to play the keys. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel this church needs to repent today. I feel that you need to repent. You need to repent. 
You need a repentance. You need a move of the Holy Ghost. Yes, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you. Jesus. Close your eyes, everyone. Keep quiet. I went to a certain church. When the Holy Ghost came like this, I knew what was happening. I called the sister, said, go outside. We went there. Then I said, pastor, the pastor says, pastor, let me go back to church and close the service. I said, you stop here. Let me go and close the service. I know you're the pastor, but I'm going to close for you. I went, I went back to the pulpit. I said, everyone who is not living right, you go out there. If you are not going right now, it's going to be called out. It began to happen. It said, you can't come among my children with your field. And I saw the sister, she ran quick outside. Then she came. Said, I want God to forgive me. I said, for what? Said, just to, to help me to leave. Right, and what have you done? She began to deal die. I said, You have a boyfriend. You have boyfriends. Married sister. Married in the message of the old. Having boyfriend that she sleep with in the car. I asked her, I said, Sister, does your boyfriend, your husband have girlfriends? She said, My husband doesn't do few things like this. We need the Holy Spirit back in the message of the hour. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. There are people who are supposed to be at the altar here now. I said there are people who are supposed to be right here at the altar. Now, now. If you don't, your name will be called out here. I'm telling you. You can't commit a doubter and come here. I'm talking about adultery, serious adultery committed here. I'll say, if you don't come here, your name is then called. Now, now, you come to the old. Can we close your eyes? Unless you are a deacon. I want everyone to close your eyes. Unless you are a deacon and a minister. Things will no longer be the same in this church. God has visited you. God has visited you. Things will not remain the same in this church. You hide messages for your wife. And you want to pretend to be a gentleman. You fight your wife. You threaten people. You threaten even preachers. God has brought me to South Africa to tell you, unless you repent, you are gone. This can be your last chance. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ. Sister, if you know this Shona song, you play for me. Baba, God wants to do 
things here, Pastor Mayere. You wanted to perform real miracles, but people are fit. Nangwe Ndaka Tatsa Yenende No Shembe Shewangu You want to stop tongues and gifts in the church because you are living in sin. You want to quench the spirit because you are living horrible. And you want to keep a big name that you're a big preacher and a big pastor and a big an apostle and a big prophet and that this and that. can switch off the cameras is it okay with your pastor switch off that camera let's all close our eyes be reverent everyone be quiet stop the music stop the music let's all be quiet I say be quiet. Close your eyes, my brother. Be quiet. I say be quiet. Close your eyes. This is not a gimmick. There are people who are wearing tongues who didn't come from Zimbabwe that I don't know about. There are people here who are professing whom I don't know nothing about them. Repent, Johannes Beck. Repent. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ. Things will not be well with you and things will not be the same anymore.
in this church. You will not bring your sin here. You will not bring your adultery anymore. You will never do it. That time is over. God will never allow you to do it anymore. Unless you repent, your sin will find you out. If you want the Holy Spirit, you can raise your hand wherever you are. Because the Holy Spirit is here. If you want to be revived back in your life, to go back to a prayerful life, what you used to do in the beginning, you can go back. Receive your revival. The non tabernacle. Receive your revival. You can receive the Holy Spirit in this quietness, serene atmosphere. I want one sister who is a good pianist there, without guitars, just a keyboard, without a bass, to play quietly, sweep over my soul with your volume low. I want you all to close your eyes. Sweep over my soul. Sweep over my soul. Sweet spirit. Sweep over for my soul, my rest is calmly will I see at your feet, sweet spirit, sweet heart. Oh, for my soul, sweet hope. Yes, hallelujah. Receive it, the Holy Spirit. Receive it, the Holy Spirit. Receiving the Holy Spirit. Stop moving around those that are moving around. Just increase it a little bit, my sister. Well done. Sweet oh, for my soul. Lift your hands. Sweet oh, for my soul. Sweet spirit. Sweet oh, for my soul. Today, my rest is calmly. Yes. Shall we stand to our feet quietly? Sweet, oh, lift your hands. For my soul, 
sweet moon for my soul, sweet moon, sweet moon for my soul, oh my rest is comely. Well, I see. Sisters, can you sing sisters only? Sweet. Sing it loud, sisters. Hallelujah. Raise your voices to him. Glory. Glory. My rest. Yes. Yes. Yes, you can receive the rest. Brothers only. I like that. Loud brothers, lift your voices to him. Let's all be quiet and listen to the music only. Reverend. Dear Lord Jesus, we humble your, ourselves in your divine presence. We ask, O oh God, that you give pardon to our sins. Forgive us, Lord. Start with us ministers of the gospel who are drifting the people away from the Bible. Forgive me, Lord. And I come as I present myself to you, together with these that have come to the altar, those that have raised their hands, that they need a repentance. Let every sin that shall be confessed, that shall be made right to the pastors, be under the blood. I pray that you touch each one of us from today. That we start anew as we see the nearing of the rapture, the coming of the Lord. What ought of people, of persons, ought we to be? If there are people here who are sick and afflicted, I pray that you touch them, that you heal them. Forgive in Jesus' name, amen. Quickly, you can take your seats. I want to finish my sermon.
Just give me five minutes, Pastor. So I was telling you about this testimony of my mother, how she came in the Guinness Book of Records. And we were called Vanavi Ngoz. And it falls there in the Chinamasa village. The spirits, you know, these things are real. They could make this brew, the, the brew that they make there, it's about, they take about four days to make it and people they drink and they get drunk and they start to sing certain songs for those spirits to come. During the time they'll be singing and drinking the alcohol that they make there for their spirit mediums. People, they don't come back home. They take the beer and the things and certain people who are anointed with such devils and go to a certain place and they do their rituals and all. The moment they'll be coming back, there'll be clouds in the air and the rain will fall. It happens practically. It's still happening to some rural places in Zim, I don't know here, but that's the spirit of Africa. So they have taken that spirit, it was put upon my mother. That's what caused her to come in this Guinness Book of Records. So 1975, 22 December, there came a lightning that struck the house. There were people, you can bring back the video, brother. Is it now on? Ah, great. You are such a wise man. So people had come for the Christmas holiday where they do that uh, those, uh, their feasts, evil things, and so forth. The people who were outside were thrown inside the little hut, and my mother was inside the hut. She was thrown outside, and the lightning struck, and 21 people died on the spot. So, from there, she came to Harare. That's where she met my, my dad. Uh, and I was born 6 February 1984. 1988, they divorced because my mother was married to a spirit. She could not have a marriage, my own mother. I'm one like a bastard born child, born out of the wardrobe, which were not allowed to be priests in the Old Testament. <laughs> but the blood of Jesus Christ speaketh better things. So, 19, 6 February 82, my sister was born, and 6 February 84, I was born. Then they divorced 1988. My dad came to stay here in South Africa from 1988 to 2005, then he died. So, I was raised up among witches, among witch doctors, among people who really practice things that are real than what you can talk about. Then, when my brother finished his O-level, he lost his mind because of those spirits. Totally insane. I told the people yesterday, he could lift a car with one hand. He could take a brick, it could come back to soil. He could do things. So one day we were in prayer, and I was fasting for my brother. And I was standing before this brother, it was around 3 p.m., the brother went to prophesy and told me what was the cause why my brother was losing his mind like that and referred it back to 1975. You see why gifts must operate in the church? I was given instructions to go how to pray for him. So I called my pastor's course. They were in prayer and all. I went to Ntare. I went, I saw Pastor Masai. He gave me another brother. We went. When we were like almost uh, 10 k's away, my brother went out outside the house. He stood right at the place where we were coming through. And he began to shout and say, Lloyd is coming, you see him now, now. Like region who began to shout when Jesus was still afar off. So when we got there, finally about two hours, an hour or so, uh, I greeted him thinking I'm greeting a normal person. Come, my brother, or come, person. So, come, person. So, I greeted him. So, the moment I shook his hand like this, I didn't know I was now dealing with a demon. 
my brother's face just changed. Then he pulled me. I thought he wanted to hug me. He held me here by the neck and by the legs here. He wanted to throw me on the floor. So I screamed. So people will be watching the drama. So I just said, let's go inside the house and pray. He put me smartly down. And I was shaking. There was death. I didn't fear him when he came because I knew this is my brother, the one I used to sleep with and all. So I didn't have fear. But when that happened, brother, I was just trembling. I used to read about region, but that was more than region. Region could break chains. My brother could hold a brick which was put in the oven, just holding it like this, could come back to nothing and dissolve to some particles of sand. I'm not telling you stories. I'm telling you things that are on the record. If you are from a nickel and you hear that story. So people walked in the house. My brother walked in the house. I was the last one. So this round hut there, they've got two doors. The one, the bottom one and the one on top. So I went inside and I closed this bottom little door. I left the other one open. The reason I did that, I wanted to jump if I sense any danger and jump through this one and close this other one. But when we got in the house, surprisingly, I stood there, I opened my Bible. I began to preach. I opened in the book of Deuteronomy, I think chapter 18, where it says, they shall not be found among you one who passeth his son through the fire and all that to sacrifice children. And I was hit. So they were my aunts and all those people who were participators of the rituals. Demons began to manifest in them and began to talk. We are now packing our things. So the moment I would preach like that, my brother wanted to take a little stool, which was just before him as he was sitting. He wanted to lift the thing, to throw it. The thing could not come up. I saw it with my eyes. He tried it. It was stuck there until I finished preaching. Then I said, my brother, do you believe? Come and kneel down there. He came, he raised his hands with this brother, it's called Brother Lamech, we went to put our hands there, we began to pray. As we were praying, he told us later, just after the prayer, he says, as you were praying, I was seeing the shadows of people leaving my body and going out. When we say the Amen, I saw his face changing, becoming normal instantly. Then I took my jacket, I began to go. It's places that if I go even today, I don't eat because they can just take me right there. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Amen. Yes. So we began to talk with my brother, to talk with somebody who was totally insane, the real stories. He said, my brother, when you were coming, I saw you like in a vision, like the way it happened in Rio. And when you came, I saw you and I put you down and you kind of like died and you were like put in the coffin. That's why when you came, I was doing what I did. And when we went into the house, the time I lifted you up in the air, there was an angel that came with a lightning speed that took you out of my hands and he put you there and he stood between me and you and I could not touch you anymore. So I got worried about it for about two years, thinking what really happened that day? And what happened on that little stool? There? Why was it not coming up? Then, one day I was reading a quotation where the prophet was going to the courts. As he was going to, for his trial, he went about for six days or so, it was a week of going to the courts. Then the last day when he was acquitted, he walked in, as he was walking, was the first one kind of to walk in. As he was walking in the courtroom, Brother Branham saw an angel before him. And that angel went to sit on the first chair. Then he went to sit on the second. Then the lawyer on the third going around. Then he said, I wondered all along the whole week that this first chair 
was not occupied every time until the last day when he actually literally saw the angel walking with him in the courtroom and took the first seat, the right one. No wonder the prophet would always tell you, if you were to be prayed by him, you had to come from the right. That's where the angel could come and stand. There's something about the right side when you're dealing with God. So something revealed to me that when we got in the house, that angel that lifted, that took me out of my brother's hand, went to sit on the little chair there. That's why he could not bring it up. You still believe in the visitation of angels? Amen. Praying for someone who was dumb. She wanted to die, that woman. So we went to the hospital. When I laid hands, I say, we bind death in the name of Jesus. So demons wanted to come out of this woman. I said, Lord, I pray that these demons will not come out in this hospital because if they come out, people will brand me like these modern day prophets and they will come and surround me. Just heal the woman. When we go home, we will pray for her and cast out these devils. I'm close. So it was Monday, Tuesday, she was discharged. She was healed from migraine, headache, and everything, but she was still dumb. So Thursday, I went to their home, began to share testimonies, and people were just staring at me like this, doubting. And I kept on testifying until I said the last testimony when Brother Branham prayed for someone who was really crippled. And he asked the girl and said, If you believe, you move the Changalana there. So I said to the family, Just like this bulb there. We turn it around. Then I said, but what's the use of turning this bulb when you've got someone who is dumb? Why can't we use the same faith to be a substance faith, visible and materialized? Everyone said, that's a very good idea. I said, let's pray. We began to pray. Those demons from the hospital came out and she became violently. I said, let's put it on a bed where it's a little bit soft. So we walked into a certain bedroom there and they put it there. I was the last one to get in the bedroom. As I was walking in the bedroom, the Holy Ghost came upon me and said, you rebuke rituals on this woman. So I just went, I stood there, I said, I rebuke the spirit of sacrificing children. Then I saw her opening the mouth and the tongue began to move. Amen. Then suddenly she said, I let her go. Then I saw my finger in the air and I said, it is done. So I walked a few steps in the corridor, coming back to the lounge there. It came back again. It is done. So I looked around. Who is saying it is done here? And I realized I was prophesying. So I said, let's see what's, what's done here. So everyone came, took their place. I looked at that woman. I said, my parents, how many children do you have? She said, she lifted her hand to illustrate four. I said, no. The time to speak in signs is over. How many children do you have? She said, four. And she said, ah. I said, ah. It was my first time to see the dumb speak instantly, not tomorrow. Then one time I was preaching in Kwadzan at Pastor, Pastor Kwad Chimunda's place. There was a sister with a child who was dumb. So I began to share that testimony. She was in tears. I saw there was a woman there right in tears. But it came so powerful in here until she looked for where the child was in the church and she grabbed the child who was about eight years and ran with the daughter to the pulpit. So she just came and stood before me. From nowhere, I didn't know the child was dumb. I was just pointing at the child. I said, this child will speak. This child will speak. It said three times. And you know what? Within one week, she was speaking. English. So yesterday when we were preaching there, is it yesterday? It was Friday. She doesn't speak. She's eight years. We want to pray for her. 
stand there. Why that sister was 25 years who wanted to be married? Why this one is eight years and she can't speak properly? Uh, it was in Banget. It was a sister who had the same... No, it wasn't like that. I was preaching in Chipinge. As I was preaching in Chipinge, there's a deacon in Chipinge there. We have got a sister in Nyazura who was crippled, could not sit. You see, people have repented and the Holy Ghost is happy. God wants to deliver his children. I really want you to lift your faith. Anything can happen. Anything. The dumb can speak instantly. The cripple can walk. The blind can receive their sight. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'll preach it. And I'll believe it. As I was going on preaching in Chipinga like that, people were being huge HIV. So they, it started with a woman who was at the way back there. I said, I you have prayed for three people in my preaching where I felt HIV leaving the body, literally. Then I pointed to the seat at the back who was HIV positive and the demon came out. I actually felt the wave going out of here. I saw the Holy Spirit moving from the corner and came to the third row. And I said, sister, that chest problem is healed. That asthma is healed. That chest pain is healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive your healing from asthma. Receiving your healing from your spinal problem. A demon came out from his sister and said, we want your blood in the chest there. And she told me later that every year around that time, someone had to die from your family. And she's leaving. So this past, this deacon brother from Chipinga called his sister and said, sister, there's a pastor here who is preaching and things are happening in church. Would you mind him to pass through as he's going back to Harare to pray for the child who is crippled? This baby boy was four years, could not speak, could not sit, could not crawl, could not stand, could not walk. The sister says, give me the number. I'll get in touch. She called me more than 10 times as I was driving from Chipinga. Then I almost denied. She said, Pastor, just pass through. You don't even sit. So we got at the house there, just a few meters away from the highway. We got in the house. She brought the child, was wearing blue cook cloth. He had some wounds in the body and they were smelling bad. That touched my heart. I took the baby to my chest. The moment I began to pray, the Holy Ghost came in there and say, it shall be well with that child. I said, amen. I looked at the sister and said, do you believe, sister? She said, yes, I do believe. I said, receive your baby in the healing of the child. You know, within one week, they send me videos of the boy dancing. A baby that could not sit. A baby that could not crawl for four years. She did, he did what he failed to do for four years within one week. Hallelujah. This is why you hear me boldly speaking what I'm talking about. I have seen it. The God of the spoken word coming. So there was a sister in another place in Banget along Chinoy there. When I was sharing that testimony, she was not wise enough and God wanted to deliver the child. I, until now, I don't know what happened later. So, she had exactly a bad four years. Cripple, doesn't speak, doesn't talk, doesn't crow. Only another sister who was at the back realized see, the testimony which is being given is of this sister with a baby at the back. That sister had to scream and run and pull the baby from the back. And run with the child to the altar and say, Pastor, here is the baby you're talking about. Another sister who was part of the witches who have wished the boy came 
and she screamed and say, Mwana ana mosha uri anufana kutfamba ne kutaura nas. When I did the investigation, she was part of the clan of the Zinyaus, those people who are, those are witches. Yeah. How many believe God is still opening the dump? Yeah. You play for me softly, the great physician. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you believe he's here? Yeah. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. Play nicely. The great physician is here. Thus, there are the testimony that I can share. I'm afraid you will not believe them. Sweet as no sweet as no more. Friends, if God can't open the blind eyes among us, to whom shall we go? If God can't open the dumb, let them speak. To whom shall we go? Let us pray. Let's all close our eyes. I want to pray for these children that God will perform a healing to them. Okay. You can believe. Dear Lord Jesus. With our eyes closed. My last testimony, which is not long. I was preaching in Kambuzuma. There was a sister who had an uncle was sick, paralyzed, could not walk. Then she wanted him to come so much for the meetings and she could not. Friday could not. Saturday, she asked the pastor and the pastor said he would send the deacons to bring the men to church. The deacons failed to get fuel. Then Saturday after the second service, that sister saw me and said, Pastor, I've got an uncle that I wanted to come to be prayed for, but we could not bring him. I said, Sister, have you ever read in the book of Acts 19.11 which says, God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. I said, give me that cloth and I'll pray for it and send it to the uncle. She gave me the little cloth. I prayed for it. I said, go home. Don't speak to anyone. Go and lay it straight to the other angle, on, on the angle. She went, she did it. Within a few minutes, when she was in her bedroom, she heard the angle screaming. And the angle was calling my name and saying, Chinamasa, what have you come to do with us? But I was 80 kilometers away. Then she ran to the bedroom, opened the door, and saw the men under demon possession. 
she called the pastor. Pastor arranged that the next day, Sunday, he was in church. And he came. He was sitting to my left. The moment I began to try to preach, I felt the wave of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I tried to resist it. Then I said, I feel TB. Then I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke TB. And the man fell down and that demon came out of him and it left him. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. Yankees are now casting out demons like in the days of the Apostle Paul. If you've got a loved one, you want them to be prayed for, you can bring a cloth quietly. I'm giving you a minute to do that. Then you can send it to your loved ones. If you have someone who is sick and they are not here, you want them to be healed, we can pray for the handkerchiefs and send them and you have a testimony. You know the story of this woman who was healed from cancer. She went to the Methodist campgrounds. Quickly, don't take long. I'm not compelling you to do that. I want you to have faith in it. Just quickly give me the things. The cloth. Anything that will represent it. Like in the Bible. Don't just come because you have seen others coming. You must do it by revelation. Let us close our eyes. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you this afternoon. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit, which is present among us now. Without any speck of doubt, we feel your presence, Lord. And I lay my hands upon these handkerchiefs and aprons, like what you read in the book of Acts, Lord, that you wrote special miracles by the hands of the Apostle Paul. We are not St. Paul, but you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We have seen you doing the same even in our day. And I want to pray that where these aprons, these clothes, these parcels, where they will be sent, may they go with the anointing of the Holy Spirit and to rebuke the devil and let the sick be healed, evil spirits. Let them come out from the people. We ask your blessings. We send them with your blessings in Jesus' name for the healing of the sick and the delivering of those that are bound in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, person. You can come and take over. The deacons, you can come and people, you can identify your parcels there. Maybe they can be put at the corner there.
Yes, yes.
su sedio a serere You may have come desiring that uh, maybe the preacher will pray for me. God knows and God has answered your prayer. Oh precious heavenly father. Oh mighty God. You are not far away. You are here in our midst. You are a high priest that can be touched by the feelings of our infirmity. Dear God, we are not speaking to a father that's in the stars somewhere. You are standing in Benoni City Tabernacle. You are visiting your children. You are healing your children. You are delivering your children. You are restoring your children. Dear God, we are glad because it is done. We are glad because you are not a liar. You have said it and you have done it. Dear God, we are standing as witnesses to the performance of God in our midst. Dear Master, I pray. May the power of the Holy Ghost May he move in the hearts of men and women. May he fill our souls. May he fill us till we overflow, dear God. May we walk circumspect of the vocation whereunto we have been called. Dear Lord Jesus, I am praying. Mighty God, may we not lose anything that was purposed for us this day. Oh, mighty God, a new page has been opened. A new beginning has been given to Benoni City Tabernacle. A blank page to rewrite. Our lives to rewrite. Our testimony to rewrite. Our Christian walk. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dear Father, these are blood washed, blood purchased. We are blacking them out of the hands of the enemy. We are placing them in the cross of righteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus. Grant it, Father, that it be, it be so. According to the word that has gone forth. We have received our breakthroughs. We have received our children. Our houses. Our tabernacle. Our cars. In the name of Jesus. Our visas. Passages that were closed have been opened for us. In the name of Jesus, dear God, we have been taken from earthly realms to spiritual realms. We have been set in a place to see angels. We pray the God of Malachi 4, the God of Elijah, must operate in this Elisha bride. A double portion. May we see coitus disappear, sumas disappear, cancers disappear. In the name of Jesus, dear Father, it's been said and it has been done. We receive it and we accept it. Bless your servant. Bless your servant. The portion of money that remaineth on that stand. It is his in the name of Jesus. Dear Father, may he receive it and may it overflow. That tabernacle they want to build, may they have the resources for it. 
it is theirs in the name of Jesus. Restore the virtue that has gone out of him. I pray for a special blessing over his family. Dear God, may they be established. Give them a place of comfort that they may worship you better than they are doing. I know, dear God, there is a purpose. You have raised him even unto the bride. Dear God, I pray that it be fulfilled. May he be strengthened even for the service that he's going to have afterwards. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Uh, I think this is someone's uh, prayer cloth. Praise the Lord. Yo. My. What a service. What a service. I'm just filled with so much joy. And I am filled with so much wanting again. I feel like we had just started. We love you, Pastor Chinamasa. We love you with all our hearts. How many have been blessed? How many would want him to come back again? Praise the Lord. We will not announce it again. We'll keep it a secret so that God can visit us in such a way. Uh, I think you are starting to understand what I was talking about. Are you understanding what I was talking about? If you can't see God now, I don't know when you will see God. Uh, I had a burden. I had a burden, I had a burden, and God sent the preacher. You know, I had a burden. You know, sometimes you preach about certain things, and people, instead of getting better, they become worse. And you rebuke it, and they become worse. And you think, maybe, let me not rebuke it. Maybe they will become better. They become worse. The Holy Spirit is very timid. It's very timid. They are very simple things. Very simple things that hinder the Spirit of God to move. And one of those simple things is your hairstyles. I stand here every time. I preach against these funny things that you put in your heads. You want to worship God. But you don't want to worship the way that God has instructed. You want to worship God the way that you want. Brothers and sisters, I am telling you this. Remove those funny things in your heads. There is a heaven to go to. There is a Christian life to be lived. How can you overcome when your images are like the world? Do you think I cannot afford to buy extensions for my wife? Do you think I'm a poor man that I can't buy extensions for 800 rand? Am I so backward? You are more revelated and you want to trust the ministry to see you through. You are fooling yourselves may come to the altar and cry you will never have certain breakthroughs until you obey in simple things come to church early there is really a need for consecration 
we prayed, waited on God to speak to us, and God spoke to us in this church this morning. Some of you, it was too direct. Yes. I never told the pastor anything. Yes. And even if I did, I never met you to point to say this is the person. I never did that. It was so direct. Yes. If you can't believe that was God, I don't know. You came to the altar. You did a good thing. That's where it begins. But you need to come and see me. Are you hearing me? If you came to the altar, you need to come and see me. I saw you coming to the altar. You need to come and see me. We need to speak it over. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't think it's over. You need to come and see me. You can't live a secret sinning life. Come here and present yourself as a righteous person. You have heard, this is the last you are going to do that. There was a day I preached. They moved in a certain direction. I almost said, you stop doing what you are doing. And being a pastor, I felt for you. But God will anoint someone to call you out by name and you shall be exposed. It's not Pentecostalism. Brother Branham says there is coming a time where sin will not enter the gates of the church. It's not only adultery. You that are in crooked deals, thieves that are here, big biters, all those things, they need to be cleaned up. We need a clean church. We need people that stand on the word of God. Can I tell you a secret? All the offices of the fivefold ministry. Are you hearing me? All the offices of the fivefold ministry have now preached on this pulpit. It's not a fourfold, it's a fivefold. And I'm saying all the offices have now, you can mark this day, have now all preached. So you can say, I don't know this one. You are the one who don't know. But all of them have now preached. It's the spoken word. It's the bride's dress way. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Please, uh, we are going to arrange for your coming very soon. We know you have to go to Joy Tabernacle now. I'm sorry. We, we had to enjoy a little more. <laughs> uh, we are apologizing, but we are not really sorry. We really enjoyed ourselves. I enjoyed everything. And I believe you have received your breakthroughs. You had demonology series explained. Eh? Just in a short while. These things are real. Amen. Let's stand up on our feet. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Nev, you can come. Praise the Lord. Just, just two minutes in the office. Amen. Shake by your head, burden. the load of guilt and shame. me and now I am no longer the same oh he touched me oh he touched me and oh the joy that floods my soul oh, something wonderful happened and now 
Since I met the blessed Savior, since I met this blessed Savior, since He cleansed and made me. the praise this morning saints amen you may be seated as we amen as we as we get ready to dismiss this morning amen you've been blessed this morning hallelujah thank you jesus we bless your holy name god we love you we adore you this morning